Today is opening day for Major League Baseball with the world champion, the St. Louis Cardinals, taking on the Miami Marlins. And that's a tech story. Why? Well, because MLB.com is one of the biggest businesses in the digital world, and MLB at bat is the biggest revenue app ever. Our Bloomberg West editor at large and diehard Giants fan is with us to discuss. I'm surprised you don't have your big foam finger with you. Well, I'm a big giant. I did do that once. That was <laughs> a very unprofessional moment for me. Uh, yes. Uh, we talked to Bob Bowman last year. We said, uh, every year I buy your app, my team wins the World Series. That didn't work for me last year. But it is the biggest app ever. And it's bigger than Angry Birds or anything else. So we went to MLB.com CEO Bob Bowman for the behind-the-scenes story of Apple's involvement in the at-bat iPad app. Well, our friend uh, Eddie Q from Apple called us and said, I need your two best developers to come out to Apple. Uh, they're going to work on a device. And we're going to take them for one week. One month, two months, maybe six months. And that's all I'm going to tell you. And he wouldn't tell you what the device was? Wouldn't tell us what the device was. Wouldn't tell us how long they'd be out there for. He also said they won't be able to talk to you about it. They'll be locked up all day. And it's really not going to be a lot of fun, but it should be a good, a good thing for you. And as you know, and the iPhone had already come out. The iPhone had been, our app, bad app on the iPhone had been wildly successful and still well, today. Well, yeah, I mean, to that, to that point, I don't think people realize the, I, the, the Major League Baseball iPhone app, as my understanding, was the highest revenue of any app ever up to that point. Right. We still are. I mean, we've been number one in the sports category uh, since February 29th this year, and we were number one last year. We're the highest grossing app of, you know, in the, of all time on, these, on this uh, device. So. To say that we had a lot of faith in Apple and the iOS operating system is to understate it. Nevertheless, it was a risk, uh, sort of a leap of faith, and it was right around now, too. It was in the February-March time frame. I don't think we were on opening night like we are today, but it was pretty close. And so losing our two best developers, mobile developers, during this time was sort of a double risk. Uh, it wasn't like we were sending them there in November. We were sending them there in the high season for us. All right, so you, so you get the iPad app out last year, the iPhone app tremendous revenues, but take us a little bit behind the business model and explain to me how it works from a, both a revenue and profit standpoint for Major League Baseball. You know, frankly, Corey, the way we look at it is the fans come first. So we've built it uh, on every operating system we can. iOS is certainly the leader, but there are many others, including Android, most notably. But our job is to put our, our content, live video, live audio, game day, stats, stories, whatever it may be, chat, you name it, on every device in every corner of the world. And our view is that if we do that well and we do that right, and we don't play favorites and we're agnostic as to platform, operating system, country, um, the revenue will come. It's not just revenues from selling the app. You've also got other buckets of revenues too. For example, tickets, right? Oh, right. I mean, we're, we, we'll, our ticketing business will be a $100 million business. Our paid content business, you know, forget just the app, but MLB.TV, our, our highest grossing product, where you can watch every live game, including you know, right here on your iPad. It, it, you get this new iPad, this high retina display iPad, and watch a live baseball game, it, this is sweet stuff. Uh, even if you're not a Giants fan, this is sweet stuff. So this is, uh, this is a good thing, Corey. I'm sure you have one already. But MLB.TV is, is uh, you know, combine it all together, it's a $200 million business for us in terms of paid content. And one of the reasons why is obviously digital and the devices, but the other reason is it's baseball. We play it every day. It's poetry in motion in 15 stadiums every day, and we're lucky to be blessed with uh, fantastic content. Now let me ask about the, the way the league has structured its deals and that, you know, on, the teams will usually own the local rights. The league, of course, sells network rights, and I guess Saturdays. But uh, the league has also maintained digital rights. Uh, what's the duration of that kind of deal, and how does that work? Yeah, the, the commissioner had vision, I think, before certainly other leagues and, and probably for other media companies, that digital media was something that mattered. And, and he had a couple owners helping him along the way, and, and we came along afterwards. It was his vision. And the thought was digital media is not part of traditional media, at least not at that time in 2000 and 2001. And we ought to exploit it ourselves we, because we can. We can go direct to the consumer. And so that's worked well for us. And I think it not just revenue-wise and, and business-wise, but for our fans. And I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in a so-called small market club or small market area, right? But those fans, even though it's a small market area, 
they have the same apps, the same MLB.TV, the same website, the same WAP site, the same everything that the biggest market club does because of the centralization of these assets. And so it hasn't just been a good business decision, although that he's proved to be very visionary there, but it's been great for the fans. Now, how does the revenue share work really quickly? Is, is this something that can help level the, the playing field in terms of quite literally the playing field uh, for baseball? The commissioner is very committed, as you know, to, to parity in baseball and competitive balance, and he's done a great, unbelievable job the last decade or so. This is a small piece of that. Yes, it is distributed evenly, so our revenues come from various sources, but they are distributed evenly among the clubs. So it's a small, uh, a small piece of a much larger pie of competitive balance that he's really put his name on. All right, so think about this. As the world changes, as digital media becomes bigger, than traditional media, what this could mean is that the revenue sharing that other leagues have and that baseball doesn't happens through this app. Because digital media, if they share all those revenues, you have more equal teams. So teams like the Oakland A's and the Milwaukee Brewers can start to compete in a financial basis with the Los Angeles Angels and the New York Yankees, the big spenders in baseball.